Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video we're talking about Dwight Howard and why nobody wanted him back in the summer of 2019 as a free agent and really why at a couple of points throughout his career teams didn't really want to deal with him. What went wrong from a team to team standpoint for Dwight Howard throughout his career? I've done this with two other players to this point in this series, Brooke Lopez and Isaiah Thomas, two players that were successful throughout their careers, but then hit this point in which nobody really wanted them. And we're going to explore why in this video for Dwight Howard. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA, then consider subscribing. I upload every single day. Okay, so let's quickly recap the career of Dwight Howard. He was the first overall pick back in 2004, somewhat surprisingly, straight out of high school to the Orlando Magic over the more proven college star in Emeka Okafor, who ended up going number two overall. And throughout his career, especially in his time in Orlando, Dwight was an incredibly valuable, productive, and at times dominant force in the NBA. He led the league in rebounding five different times and in blocks twice. He was the three-time Defensive Player of the Year, won all three of those awards in consecutive seasons, was an eight-time All-Star, was first-team All-NBA five consecutive seasons, finished second in the 2011 MVP voting behind Derrick Rose, and led the Magic to back-to-back 59-win -back seasons and an appearance in the 2009 NBA Finals. So this guy has had an incredible career, and especially in those early years in Orlando, was one of the dominant forces in the entire league. But then his career bounced around to a whole bunch of different teams after he left Orlando. We're gonna get into the specifics of all of these teams here in a second, but he ended up playing with, obviously, the Magic, then went to the Lakers in 2012 on a huge trade that kind of started the process, then to Houston as a free agent, then to Atlanta, then to Charlotte, then to the Wizards, and then now back with the Lakers as a late, very, very late free agent signing. And those are just the teams that he actually played games with. He bounced around to a couple of other teams as well that he was basically a salary dump and then wait. What exactly happened here? How did he go from being one of the most productive and dominant players in the entire league to a player that nobody even wanted anymore in the summer of 2019? Well, there's a couple of common threads here throughout his career, but let's begin with the magic he was really productive there as i mentioned but at a certain point just didn't want to be in orlando anymore and he wanted to be traded to a new team and it was this whole saga that was honestly a complete disaster for his career uh, he was in orlando and then didn't want to be there anymore he was going to be a free agent wanted to be traded to a couple of different teams most notably the nets and then at some point he ended up opting back into his player option for the following season to stay in orlando and just was a complete flip-flopper and continued to go back and forth and eventually was traded to la the problem was he just never messed with that team that was the super team with kobe and steve nash and, and dwight howard and that was the trade that as i said kind of started the process because andrew bynum ended up going to philly that went really poorly and started the process there and dwight in la it, it just didn't work out he was only there for one season then signed as a free agent in houston was a really productive player there for a couple of seasons wore out his welcome there as well and then he signed as a free agent in atlanta and was once again productive but expensive then he was traded to charlotte and was once again productive but expensive and then he was salary dumped to the nets who waived him and then he was signed to the wizards on a one in one player option middle level exception deal played like nine games with them opted into his player option was traded to memphis then waived and then signed with the lakers and the common thread throughout all of this and, and all of these situations whether it was orlando or all the way through his time you know with the lakers the first time or in atlanta or wherever he was he had this label as a bit of a diva from his first stint in orlando because that was a team that was having a lot of success and yes he he you know took on a lot of the burden of that team and was the main driving force in them being as successful as they were in addition to some of the offensive principles that they were kind of ahead of the times on in terms of shooting so many threes surrounding him with a ton of shooters but he just he just didn't want to be in orlando anymore and how he handled that original situation was definitely really damaging to his career and then it seemed like at every single stop he just he couldn't mesh with his teammates he wasn't the most mature player and really struggled to transition into a professional environment remember this is a guy that came into the league as a teenager and for whatever reason just was never able to mature and, and build those relationships with his teammates that allowed him to last in any one place outside of orlando for any extended period of time there were some awkward moments there at the end in orlando when he basically wanted his coach to be fired and then he was shown in an interview hanging out with his coach and hugging him after the coach was just asked about him possibly being fired there were so many awkward situations 
happens there in Orlando towards the end. And then the, the, the Lakers stuff just never messed. For whatever reason, people just didn't like Dwight Howard as a teammate. So he wore out his welcome in Orlando and LA in Houston and then to a lesser extent in a couple of other spots as well in Atlanta and Charlotte and as I said was moving around a couple of different teams basically as a salary dump and just it, just for whatever reason just couldn't get his career together could not mesh well with his teammates and then the other aspect of this is certainly his expense later on in his career which isn't necessarily his fault it's those teams that you know signed into those big deals but it still was definitely a factor in him being traded as many times as he was later on in his career and then it was the injury stuff. He struggled to deal with a back injury upon going from Orlando to LA, was never really able to recover from that properly and be the same level of player along with all the other issues that went on with that team. And then really for the rest of his career, I mean, he had productive long seasons, but his athleticism just wasn't there anymore that allowed him to be such a dominant player earlier in his career. And then as he was moved around to teams like the Wizards, that back injury just continued to stay with him and he only played nine games with that team. So it's the diva thing, it's not being able to mesh well with his teammates, and then it's also the injury stuff. And all of that made for a situation in the summer of 2019 where a lot of people, myself included, thought that it might just be the end of the line for Dwight. He might've just ran out of teams to take a chance on him, whether it was Atlanta or Charlotte, or then the Wizards was kind of his last ditch effort to, to really find a team that would stick with them, which it was weird how quickly all that happened because even in, in Atlanta and Charlotte, where maybe he didn't mesh super well with his teammates, he was still a really productive player and he just became too expensive and that's why he became expendable and again, dealt with some of the injury issues as he went into Washington. So when he opted into that player option, was traded to Memphis and then they waived him. Remember, going back to when he first worked out with the Lakers the second time, people were skeptical that they would even work him out or sign him because of how poorly things went the first time when he was in LA. And it was a really late addition. It's not like this is someone that was being, you know, heavily pursued as a free agent. They just kind of realized they needed more depth in the front court. And Dwight Howard was the guy that they ended up going with outside of, you know, like Joe Kim Noah and a couple of other guys that they brought in for workouts. And it's honestly incredible how good he has been for this Lakers team. They haven't asked him to do a ton except for roll to the rim and defend and rebound the ball. And he's not playing a ton of minutes again because of his age and because of some of the health stuff. But he seems to have just, for whatever reason, finally figured it out now this late into his career to just lay low to just be a good teammate to try his best to mesh with his teammates and to just do all the simple easy things on the court that he can still do at this point in his career and that's another aspect of this whole career arc for Dwight Howard is the things that he was always really good at running to the rim offensive and defensive rebounds protecting the rim getting garbage buckets and just being such an incredible force in the paint not necessarily with the basketball in his hands in the post though. And for whatever reason, whether it was a coaching thing or because Dwight wanted post touch up, post up touches or a combination of the two, he was always utilized in the post way too much and not enough as a rim roller where he was most devastating. He never really should have received a post up touch in pretty much any game, should have always been a guy rolling to the rim and setting screens. And that just wasn't something that they were able to find a good balance of at a couple of different stops in his career where he wanted to post up more than he should have and he wasn't rim rolling as much as he should have. So it, it seems like now in LA, he has come to the realization that post touches are just not gonna be his thing. And he just doesn't have the, the fluidity or the body control, or whatever it is to be an outstanding post player. And he just needs to be a guy that's gonna roll to the rim and offensive and defensive rebound. And he's been really good in LA. But it's not necessarily surprising throughout his career that he had all these issues and that all these teams didn't want him because it's pretty well documented that he just wasn't a player that guys wanted to play with, that he struggled to stay healthy later on in his career. And again, the expense aspect was there as well. So this is an interesting case of a player that nobody really wanted because for the Brooke Lopez and the Isaiah Thomas stories, there's a pretty distinct spot in their careers in which you can say, okay, at this point, nobody really wanted them. And same thing with Isaiah, Tom like Brooke Lopez, you know, once he left the Lakers, it was kind of like, okay, does anybody really want this guy? And the Bucks kind of just threw him, you know, just took a flyer on him and ended up working out really well. And then Isaiah Thomas, once all the Cavs and Lakers stuff was over, was in a similar situation, right? And that was the case for Dwight in 2019. But really there were a couple of points in his career in which, I mean, he was signed to teams and he was traded to teams, but it was more out of reluctance 
or more out of just, you know, hey, let's try and get some value out of Dwight while he still has something left. It wasn't like teams were falling over themselves to, to sign him or to trade for him. So at a couple of different points in his career, nobody wanted Dwight Howard. And uh, yeah, this video is basically just explaining why. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.